What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing, coming back at you with another video. And today, kinda gotta go over some bad things that have been happening in the reef. Not the best, not like my uh, best point in reefing, but we gotta figure out what the heck is going on with this reef tank because I thought I knew and I thought I'd been trying to figure it out, but it's been over a month and a half of algae and I can't figure it out. Maybe I did, but it's taken a while. I don't know. I'll show you what's going on and we'll jump right into it. All right, so here is my sand bed. I have not cleaned the tank in two days, three days, and that is what the sand bed looks like. Also, you can kind of see the back wall where one of my, uh, my snails decides to clean it up. It's just covered in algae, but the sides where I've cleaned it are totally fine. <sighs> don't really know what's going on. So some things I did to kind of combat what was going on in the tank. I cleaned my pumps and I also changed the gyrus orientation to more of a horizontal so it blows across the back like this to kick up any detritus that might be on the sand bed because it kind of blows everything around and makes like a circular uplifting current that gets blown up to this power head and up and out the overflow. I've also siphoned out the sand bed probably four times in the last month and a half, two months, and I can't figure it out. I put my refugium back online and the Kato is not really growing much. I never have luck with Kato, not sure why. And I have GFO, carbon, and phosphan running in the sump. I also forgot to mention I did a deep clean of the entire sump, you know, shot bag going in, 20 gallons of water out. I forgot to mention one of the other things I've been doing to make this tank a little bit cleaner is blowing off all the rock and turkey basting the rock almost every day, probably every other day. Also, I forgot to mention that I dosed Vibrant on top of this too. So there's a lot of things going on to fix this tank. I even cut back my feeding 50% for my fish for the last three weeks to a month. Now here's my thought about what has actually happened in my tank to cause this huge algae spike. Option number one this little razor blade. Now, this is not the razor blade that broke off. I had a razor blade like this, cheap Chinese razor blade, that broke off right here and ended up being stuck in the tank and washed all the way over to this corner. And I went into the tank and I dug it out. And that was about a week ago where I dug it out. And it had probably been in the tank for almost a month. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, take a look at Instagram because I posted a picture of that magnet that I used, it's a Tunzi, and I was able to get the uh, razor blade out of the tank and I didn't cut myself. Unfortunately, I did get stung like hell from the corals and I had to you know, post pictures about that. So check out the Instagram, it's shallow reefing and you will see my pictures of my arm and the razor blade. So option number two of what else is going on? After looking at the sump and everything, um, there's nothing in the sump that I noticed, so my son didn't throw anything in it. So option number two could be the salt. I did go from Brightwell to Reef Crystals and I put about 400 gallons of Reef Crystals in this system. And then everything started kind of going downhill um, a little bit after when I put Reef Crystals in. Do I think I got a bad batch? I don't know, honestly. I don't have an ICP test um, to confirm if it is, you know, the water quality but I gotta come up with a better plan to figure out how to resolve some of the issues in this tank. I switched up the filter because you can kind of see a little bit better with the cyano. There's some cyano growing in this corner of low flow, but you can kind of see there's still enough flow that's moving everything around. It's just kind of getting a foothold and I gotta figure out what to do. So I got a couple options and I gotta weigh the pros and cons of each option. Um, option number one is to do a huge water change. Now that all the reef crystals are in the tank, um, I could do a Brightwell uh, Neomarine water change and kind of get it back to that. Um, maybe there's something wrong with the old salt and it could kind of bounce the tank back. I don't know. Option two, throw in Brightwell Purit and see if it can work its miracles because it did when I uh, used that goof off, if you ever saw that. Um, how Brightwell Purit had saved my reef tank. So that would be the second option and I think that would be a good option. Option three, buy an ICP test and kind of figure out what the heck is going on. Um, 
We'll see, but BRS is out of them right now, so I'm gonna probably order from saltwateraquarium.com, get an ICP test, do it, and then send it off. The problem with the ICP test as opposed to going with the Purit though, is hey, order it, get it here, dump the tubes in the tank, ship it out, wait a couple weeks. You know, I got a couple weeks, I gotta wait to see what the results are, and then make changes based off of that. You know, there's time. At time, it could cost, you know, me some corals in here. I don't know. None of the tissue is really receding too bad. There is one uh, one or two corals that it is kind of receding, but they've kind of stopped. Um, so I got to kind of weigh what I want to do with that. This little coral right there, its tissue is receding. And then this is a Garf bonsai right there. You can kind of see the underneath is kind of RTNing a little bit. So those are my options. What do I think is the best? I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards the ICP results. Um, get those in, send them out, and then kind of, you know, see what the heck is going on. Because if it is that razor that did all that, I mean, it was a tiny razor in a big tank with carbon and GFO and phosphine being run. I don't know. I am dosing trace elements with the BRS2 part on the low end. I estimated the low end for when I did uh, the Tropic Marin uh, A minus K plus. Um, so I really don't think it's any contaminants from that. I just need to know where the heck it's going. What do you say about aerosols and everything like that? There's no uh, candles or anything in this room. My wife knows not to spray anything in here. We don't hardly do anything in this room for cleaning. Well, I mean. I kind of do some cleaning. Uh, my wife's gonna shake, she's shaking her head. No, I don't do cleaning. Whatever, I do cleaning. Um, but you know, nothing, no chemicals are in here. So I don't know, and it's not my son. I don't know, someone help me out. All right guys, so that's all I got for you today. Letting you know that this might be a video series on how to deal with unknown, you know, algae and discoloration in your tank. I don't know what I'm gonna title it yet. Um, it's gonna be something, hopefully it's gonna help you. You know, you gotta show people your successes and failures and try to, uh, you know, show them how to fix your failures and see if they can do the same thing for their tanks. You know, if it were up to me, I should never have gotten this stupid razor here, but I might try to do, um, clean the back glass off a little bit, kind of blow some stuff out now, change out the filter socks a little bit, and see if that does anything. Again, I forgot to mention that I'm also increasing the filter stock changes. I used to do it once a week and change out the quilt batting on the top every two to three days. Now I'm changing out the quilt batting on top of the filter socks every day, and I'm changing out the filter socks every five days. I'm doing a lot to get all these nutrients or whatever it is out of the system. So guys, if you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click the subscribe button. Give me a like and comment below and let me know how I'm doing. Follow me along on this journey because maybe I might solve a problem that you guys are having. Like algae popping up out of nowhere. You're testing zero nitrates and like almost zero phosphates um, because the algae's up taking it so much. You're reducing feeding, you're doing everything that you've been told, increasing flow, increasing filtration. Oh yeah, I also increased the uh, skimmer. So. And I still got this problem after a month and a half, two months. We'll see what I can do to solve this problem. So I'll see you guys next time, hopefully with some ICP results.